Coffee Break German Season 3, Episode 34. Hallo und herzlich willkommen zu Coffee Break German. Ich bin Marc. Ich bin Thomas und einen wunderschönen guten Tag, Marc. <lacht> Gleichfalls. <lacht> Dankeschön. <lacht> I wasn't expecting that. Uh, but Thomas, uh, we're back for another episode. This is episode 34 and the fourth episode of our story. Yes, and it's all about the big party night, the Abibal night today. Abibal. So the Abibal is after the Abitur. Genau, it's basically prom night in a sense. It's the big celebration uh, after you've done everything, after you've graduated from school. We are, of course, talking about Marianne and Lucy, our two friends, the two siblings, twins, in fact, who are getting ready to head off to university, hopefully for both of them in UCLA, following in their mother's footsteps. But we are pausing on that side of things and going to be celebrating their abitur uh, in this episode. So, as ever, we'll listen to the episode together and then we'll talk a little about it afterwards. Bist du bereit, Thomas? Ja, lass uns die Geschichte anhören. Es ist endlich soweit. Der Abend des Abiballs, des letzten Ereignisses am Gymnasium. Lucy hält den Saum ihres dunkelgrünen Abendkleides mit der linken Hand hoch, während ihre Absätze in raschem Tempo auf den Asphalt klopfen. Marian läuft gelassen neben ihr her und ist in seinem Anzug und mit neuem Haarschnitt überaus gut aussehend. Schon vor dem Eingang hört man das laute Getöse aus der Halle. Als die Zwillinge mit Eltern im Schlepptau eintreten, können sie ihren Augen kaum trauen. Der ganze Saal ist geschmückt mit Tüchern, Kerzen und Blumen. Das Komitee, das den Ball organisiert hat, hat wirklich fantastische Arbeit geleistet, denkt sich Lucy. Und auch den anderen steht die Verwunderung ins Gesicht geschrieben. Ab dem Moment vergeht der Abend wie im Rausch. Eine Reihe von Reden und Auftritten, köstliches Essen, Musik und Tanz und viel Gelächter. Leute huschen zwischen Tischen herum, um sich mit Klassenkameradinnen und Kameraden und deren Familien zu unterhalten. Auch Lucys und Marians Lieblingslehrer, Herr Franz, kommt zwischen Hauptspeise und Nachtisch vorbei, um den Zwillingen persönlich zu gratulieren und sich mit den Eltern auszutauschen. Als die Geschwister mit ihrer Clique aufs Parkett gehen und zu ihrem Lieblingslied tanzen, sieht man Marian nichts mehr vom Stress der letzten Woche an. Er ist wieder ganz der Alte und singt unbeschwert mit den anderen mit. Gegen halb elf ertönt im Lautsprecher der Abschied. Doch hier geht der Abend für die Abiturientinnen und Abiturienten erst richtig los, denn sie feiern gemeinsam in der Stadt weiter. Die Gruppe schnattert schon aufgeregt und leert ihre Sektgläser, während sich die Eltern verabschieden und Richtung Ausgang bewegen. Moment, Mama, ruft Lucy plötzlich. Meine Sneaker sind doch noch im Auto. Leute, wartet ihr noch kurz auf mich, bis ich Schuhe wechsle? Ich bin gleich zurück und dann können wir von mir aus auch los. Thomas, I have a question. Okay, frag. <laughs> Do the parents go to the prom too? Yes. So it's a, it's a big family event. Wow. And so quite often grandparents as well. Oh my goodness. But then as we learn later, at some point the parents say goodbye. Yeah. And then they go off into the city, I think, to celebrate. Get out. Which sounds, sounds a little scary, to be honest. But anyway, <laughs> let us, there speaks a father. Um, <laughs> let's go back and talk a little about what is happening here because it is, it's the big night of celebrating. Okay, now, and at the start, we learn a little bit about what the twins are wearing. Mm -hmm. so we, see, we hear that Lucy's wearing a dark green evening gown mm -hmm. and she's wearing some form of shoes with heels. We don't know how high they are, <laughs> but there's definitely heels involved. That's right. Uh, and uh, I think Marianne is in a suit and he's got a new haircut, hasn't he? Yes, and he's looking very, very handsome. And then the whole 
whole night is a grand night. They hear like loud noises. They're amazed at how beautiful decorated everything is and how well it is organized. So they're all delighted and really looking forward to the night. And it's nice because, the, the, the as you said, the, the parents are there. Perhaps the whole family is there. Um, and uh, they are talking to the teachers. The teachers are talking to the students. It's, everyone's all together. Ganz genau. It's like a big celebration with school involved, families involved and the pupils. And there's normally speeches, good food and quite often a live band for some music. And that's what the, the next uh, paragraph is here about, that they're just chatting to everybody, as you said. They dance and everybody's in a good mood. And I think the things go pretty quickly. All, the, all of these different parts of the evening, there are speeches, food and laughter and, and so on. I also heard something about the Lieblingslehrer, the, the favorite teacher. Yeah, Herr Franz uh, kommt auch vorbei. He's also, he's talking to, the, to Lucy and Marian and to the parents. That's right. And yeah, you said it passes very quickly and they used the phrase wie im Rausch. So like in a, in a flurry, mm -hmm. in a, what would you say in English? Uh, when things pass in an instant, when things pass by in a jiffy or something like that. In a jiffy, okay. <laughs> Funnily enough, we were doing that exact expression in Spanish this morning when I recorded La Penultima Voluntad with okay. Annabelle. <laughs> <laughs> so, en un periquete, which is a lovely, a lovely word, en un periquete, but in a, in, in, in a rausch in, in German. And that word rausch there that you mentioned, uh, is it linked to the English word rush? Mm, not really. It sounds really similar, but you can't you can't translate it literally. So you can't say in a rush, im rausch. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not the same. Im rausch is more the the sense of you're really intoxicated by something. You're really into something. Okay. So if you, for example, you can be im rausch der Gefühle. Oh, like in a rush of feelings. In the rush of feeling, like in a frenzy of feelings. That that idea. Okay, and so it can be used uh, like positively and in being intoxicated by the sunshine or being uh, by the feelings of, of, of love or something like that. Yeah, you know, you can use it with say, like fühle, gefühle or like uh, any, it's mostly positive. Yeah, and can it also be used in the sense of being intoxicated, for example, with alcohol? Yes, so all kinds, emotions, alcohol, and it's always, you're just, as I said, you're so into something, you're take, almost taken over by it. Okay. So coming back to the story then, um, I think I would be right in saying that Marianne has forgotten his worries of, of, the, of, of the previous episodes, perhaps. Yeah, er ist ganz der Alte, so he's back to his usual old self. That's a nice expression. So er ist ganz der Alte, so it's like the old version of himself. Genau, or you could say, if it's uh, Lucy, you would say, it says, sie ist ganz die Alte. Die Alte, and Alte stays the same each time. Genau. Good. Okay. And then the prom actually finishes at 10.30 and it's time, as we said earlier, for the parents to say goodbye mm -hmm. and to let the, the kids, now not really kids anymore, more like young adults, loose in the city. And that's what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and just at the end, I think Lucy realizes that she's, I, I don't think she wants to go out on the town with her high heels on, basically. No, she wants her sneakers and she shouts to her mama, wait, wait for me for a moment. And she runs back to change her shoes. Okay, so there we have it. Um, uh, I don't know whether we'll find out more about what happens later in the evening in the, in the next episode or whether we'll be moving on to, to their further university plans. We'll see you next time. We shall indeed. Now, before we finish this episode, there's just time for noch eine Kleinigkeit. So, Thomas, what do you have for us today in our Kleinigkeit? Heute geht es auch um einen Ball, uh -huh. aber den Fußball. Ah, so not a, a dancing ball, but football. Genau, und die, die Kleinigkeit ist am Ball bleiben. Am Ball bleiben, so to stay on the ball. Exactly, and it comes from football, so if you're in the possession of the ball, if you have ball's possession, that's normally good. And it translates in a lot of different ways, but the idea is that you stay on top of something, that you stay up to date with something, but also that you, for example, you don't give up and you pursue your goal. So if you are learning a language and somebody says, oh, lernst du immer noch Spanisch? Mm -hmm. Du sagst, ja, ich bleibe am Ball. Like, I'm staying on the ball. I'm still doing it. I'm doing my daily lessons. Yeah, great. Okay, so am Ball bleiben. Ich, bei, ich bleibe am Ball. But in English, we have a, an expression of you can describe someone as being on the ball, meaning that they are aware of things and they are very much, uh, they're, they're knowledgeable, uh, knowledgeable about a particular subject. So that's different in German. 
No, it's also meaning so it's in the sense of you pursue your, a goal, but also that you s stay up to date, that you're like on the ball on the latest developments in politics or something. Okay, right. So very versatile phrase. Yeah. Excellent. So that's where we're going to leave it for today. Hopefully we'll all stay am Ball this week. Auf jeden Fall. Wir bleiben am Ball, was bei Lucy und Marian passiert. <laughs> all right. Okay. So we'll, we'll get up to date with what happens with Lucy and Marianne next time. Richtig. Also vielen Dank, Thomas. Vielen Dank, Marc, und bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss. You have been listening to a Coffee Break Languages production for the Radio Lingua Network. Copyright 2023, Radio Lingua Limited. Recording copyright 2023, Radio Lingua Limited. All rights reserved.